name is Loretta O'Donnell. I'm the Vice Provost for Academic Affairs here at Nazarbayev University. A couple of questions have come to mind when we think about open access. I've got some reflections. I'm sure you'll have reflections as well. So when we come together, it will be great to talk about them to see how we can move forward together. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I was asked to give some ideas of why open access is important in the academia. Hi, I'm uh, Gerald Kavna and I am the Library Director here at Najibayev University. And we're here to talk about open access and what does it mean? Open access is um, inclusion. Uh, a value that we uh, provide to all people in the academy to access research work by other people around the world. So the open access guarantees accessibility of knowledge to everyone. Uh, but before we get into uh, the open access um, debate, I just want to uh, mention that uh, in libraries particularly, information is for use and uh, restricted access to information should be uh, avoided. Uh, and basically the, for the betterment of man is that if we have access to information we will grow uh, and we will become better uh, as individuals and society will get better. I reckon that the knowledge is public good, so that everyone who produces the knowledge and who consumes the knowledge have a equal access um, to, to get the benefit of that. And uh, what we see that um, unfortunately uh, not everyone has access to that sort of knowledge, especially to the cutting edge researchers or the uh, academic publications that we pre um, Produce. That's, uh, I believe that's uh, especially important for the uh, developing countries or the countries in the global south who sometimes and most often do not have access uh, on, due to the different reasons, uh, for instance the uh, impact of colonialism or the uh, general knowledge building hierarchies in the world uh, that led to the um, that led to the fact that sometimes and most often they don't uh, get the um, access to these, to these researchers. Uh, so open access for me um, is very important from the point of view both of my research production in terms of being able to access uh, material that other researchers produce or even being able to share my own uh, uh, you know, research output, uh, specifically journals, etc. with the community. But um, there is an aspect of my work that I think uh, is particularly, uh, for which I think open access is particularly important, which is the creation of a linguistic data set that uh, we plan to share with the community of speakers. And so, for example, with my team in the linguistics department here at Nazarbayev University, we are putting together a collection of uh, uh, text, of conversation, of spoken Kazakh. So we go around the country and we record people speaking with their family, with their friends, with their colleagues. Uh, we transcribe this data and then we um, try to study the grammar of Kazakh as it is spoken nowadays. And so what we basically have access to is this very nice collection of uh, informal speech that uh, people uh, trusted us with and that they granted us access to. And so um, it is important for us to publish this type of data in open, in open access, not only because we see it as giving back to the research community, but also because someone else from the speaking community of Kazakhstan may be interested in that. And so open access for us really becomes a way of giving back to Kazakhstan. Uh, in the scientific community, the more open access journals are open, opening year by year, even like very respected journals are moving to the open access systems because it allows uh, to have an access to their papers, to their findings for the whole community, not only in the science, maybe like uh, students, researchers, um, 
higher education uh, professional, they can all easily access all the data. Why it is important to publish in open access? Uh, for researchers, of course, it's um, first of all to disseminate their findings, yeah, to show it and provide to the whole community. And uh, second of all, um, as I said before, it might be more accessible. Yeah, you have can you might be able to create more collaborations, and more people might find uh, your research interesting. To And I'm going to concentrate on three particular uh, areas. One is on funding, the second is on quality, and the third is on uh, attitudes uh, and our culture in, in academia. Uh, and to start with, with funding, the open access model uh, has shifted the responsibility from uh, for, for, for open access is for the reader to get access to the information. But because of this, there is still a charge which uh, is incurred for to publish an article. So that means that that shift has meant that the author is now responsible. So many open access journals have actually put this onus on the author to pay what's called a article publishing charge. Now, with a well-funded institution or university or a researcher that has a quite a lot of grant money this isn't a difficulty but it can can cause inequalities for people who don't have money uh, and don't have money to publish so what can we do about this well obviously one of the things we can do is to advocate that the a the monies that would be available for a researcher to publish uh, is incorporated in the grant uh, when it's awarded. Uh, also, universities can pool resources to help uh, researchers publish articles in open access. And that way, no researcher is going to be left behind, which is very important. The second thing I want to talk about is a challenge uh, which is in relation to quality. Because of these charges, there, we have what's called predatory journals, which cause a lot of difficulties for young, particularly researchers. And a lot of these uh, predatory journals will actually publish for a fee. Now, they will publish for a fee, but there is no peer review. Uh, so how do we combat that? There are guidelines and there are standards which we can use. Uh, DOAGE is a, a directory of open access journals which offers advice uh, in relation to how to recognize uh, predatory journals. There's also COPE, C -O -P -E, which is the Committee on Publish, Publishing Ethics and they give very good guidelines. And this is something that we must advocate for that uh, that we, we do adhere to standards and we do adhere to guidelines when it comes to publishing. So that is very, very important. The final thing I'll mention is our uh, institutional attitude towards uh, open access. For many years, for decades, uh, in academia, uh, researchers have been uh, kind of a, I, I suppose persuaded to publish in a you know high impact a subscription journals and in a lot of cases this depends uh, for the, that the publisher needs to or the, the researcher needs to publish in these journals uh, for career advancement uh, and we need to change that attitude and how do we go about doing that well we we need to uh, advocate that the governments, the funders, the universities, they encourage their authors to publish in open access journals and even incentivize the, uh, the uh, researcher to uh, publish in open access. Uh, and that way we can actually give more access to the general public and to our communities and you know, to the wider audience. Uh, I wish journals could understand and let us uh, reduce at least reduce the fee for the open access and I believe uh, some journals uh, they even restrict maybe uh, acceptance of certain journals when uh, the author cannot pay the ac uh, open access fee 
so which is very saddening and in some cases you don't have all these uh, the grants research grants and uh, specifically funding for the publications so we wish there will be more open access world here yeah, in the scientific community and everyone had an access without any restrictions to the high quality journals I think there are two types of challenges. The first one, if we uh, talk about open accessing the data specifically, the type of challenges we face is that some of these data are particularly sensitive. As I, as I said, like we record people speaking with their families and friends. And so I think that the way to address this specific challenge is to have a very strong consent process with the people that uh, give us access to their own recordings. So for example, what we do is we usually uh, first collect consent for recording, we make people aware of the fact that we would like to publish this data open access. But then once we finish a recording, we give the possibility to the people to rewatch it and just tell us if they are still comfortable because we think this is really important. Uh, so I think that um, Having strong consent procedures is a very good way of addressing this issue of uh, publishing data in open access. In terms of uh, the second type of publication in open access, which is the um, sharing of scientific output, so in specifically journals, uh, journal articles uh, and, and so on, um, I feel like the challenges usually are sort of like I, I don't see them very much on the side of the researchers, but more on the side of the publishers sometimes. So we are faced with, uh, you know, this increasing amount of fees that we need to pay in order to be able to make our, uh, our own research available. And usually I would think that mm, two very good ways of addressing this problem is, well, the first, uh, I think uh, Nazarbayev University in a way is going in that direction of like creating more and more economic incentives and grants that um, researchers can use to pay for these fees. And so also like giving uh, priority <laughs> to publishing in this type of journals. Um, and the second type of um, effort that we could do, and this, is, uh, this can be done by the single researcher, is that of uh, self-archiving basically our own material and make it available also in institutional repositories so that uh, people are able then to, to access this type of information. Thank you, Rob. One of the challenges is ensuring that our students and our colleagues actually upload those documents in a way that they become very accessible to the community. For instance, in our wonderful Nazarbayev University Institutional Repository, we need people to actually use that not only as a resource to look at the latest literature on a range of important topics, but to contribute to that resource as well. So I think for me, one of the challenges is not only taking, but contributing to that Shared and the current challenges we may face with open access is that we need to be careful that uh, the open access is uh, connected to a reputable editorial company or an institution or a repository that belongs to a, an institution that is uh, well reputed uh, because uh, we don't want to have access to information that is not uh, properly uh, supported. And the challenges also with open access information might be that nowadays when we publish research, the research can be in subscription-based journals or open access journals. Subscription-based journals do not charge, uh, don't, do not charge uh, to the authors, but at the same time, uh, they are not easy to access by people who, have, who don't have the subscription. And that limits the reach of our knowledge or our or innovation ideas that we create and that is not really good to provide uh, the broader uh, reach of what we produce. In the other hand, open access has a charge and uh, the charge for publishing open access in journals of open access is sometimes out of the, the budget of uh, research uh, uh, components in the universities and that makes some uh, difficulties. So I believe that as far as open access is uh, available and the fees are not substantial, I think it's a good practice to keep track of good research and leave it accessible for all around the world. Open access should be supported fully 
by local institutions and global institutions as a manner to provide knowledge in a broader manner to include all population in the world, in the city, in the country, to have access to the new knowledge created by research. So overall, open access gives a, a wide access to communities, it gives access to businesses, it gives access to uh, non-profit organizations, and it gets people involved and gets people talking about what is science, why is it important, and why is it important to me. So thank you.